There was so much that I loved about the original Surface Go, but it wasn't quite good enough. Today, I'm taking a look at Microsoft Surface Go 2. Can it clear that bar? Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. People like you, and you, and you, and no, not you, and you, wait, hold on. Thanks for all you're doing for us right now. I picked up the original Surface Go almost two years ago because so many of you wanted to know what it was like to draw on. I didn't really have high hopes, but it turned out that I really liked it. That size and form factor were so cool, even if the drawing experience was just so-so. The Surface Go 2 has all that cuteness with some key improvements. The bezels are a bit smaller and the screen is a little bit larger. It's still a lot of fun to type on with that keyboard cover. It's still incredibly light and super easy to carry around just like a notebook. Where I ran into problems last time was using this as a drawing machine. It was just too underpowered to use as your main PC for art and illustration and the pen was only okay. There are better ones out there for other Windows laptops and tablets. It's hard to find this form factor Factor, though, and that is a huge part of the appeal. So when I went to buy this computer, I was I was a little torn. I even went to Twitter to ask you guys what you thought. Do I go with that base $400 model or do I go up to the configuration that I know would work better for what I want to do? I decided to go cheap. What? Why would you do that? One of the most common questions I get on all of these videos is, is the cheapest Surface device good enough for art? Is the cheapest iPad good enough? Is the cheapest Android tablet good enough. And I knew that if I reviewed the Surface Go 2, that was going to be the number one question that I got down in the comments. Look, the main appeal of the Surface Go 2 isn't the size or how easy it is to carry around or what it's like to type on. The main appeal is that price. It is a $400 Windows tablet and people want to know, is a $400 Windows tablet good enough? And the answer is mixed. In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. And to start to answer that question, let's go to the specs. Inside it, you can either get an Intel Pentium Gold 4425Y, or you can go up to the eighth generation Intel Core M3. Graphics inside this thing are Intel UHD graphics, 615. It sports a 10.5 inch display screen, which is 1920 pixels by 1280 pixels. Doesn't sound like a lot of pixels. It's only a little bit bigger than a full HD device, but on a smaller screen of this size, it actually looks really good. They've also reduced the bezels around the edges this time, so it looks more modern as well. You can either get this with four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of memory, or you can get 64 gigs of eMMC storage or go up to the 128 SSD. All of this, and it weighs just a little over one pound. As soon as you boot it up, you do notice how nice the screen looks on this thing, even though the bezels are a little chunkier than what you might be used to if you've seen the Surface Pro X. It doesn't look quite as modern on the outside or around the back either, but these are the type of things that seem logical to cut corners on if you're looking at getting the price down. Not everyone loves the kickstand. I do. I am firmly on team kickstand here. Let's me put this tablet at a good viewing angle or a good drawing angle and anything in between. You still have the magnetic power port along the side, which is really nice. If you accidentally trip on the cord, it's going to pop right out. You still have that solo USB type C port along the side, and you still have a micro SD card slot along the back. Heck, you even have a headphone jack. The downside of driving down the price by using more inexpensive components is you're also sacrificing a lot of performance. The Pentium Gold CPU just isn't that good and art applications just perform better with more RAM. Also, the RAM and storage that you're gonna find here aren't the new speedy kind. They're a step down from what you might find in the Surface Pro. I tried to use this the way I would use a computer. I installed my email on there, I had Spotify, playing. I had different Windows tabs with Google Docs and YouTube and things like that open while I was drawing. And for the most part, it worked. It wasn't nearly as fast as I wanted it to be. There were bits of lag here and there when I was going to check my email after drawing for a bit. It would stop and think for a second. That sort of thing happens a lot. Installing Adobe Creative Suite in Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe Animate, that was that was not a fun experience. This is not the computer for that, at least not at this base configuration. If you're going to be running Adobe, I wouldn't even touch the base configuration here. You definitely 
definitely want to go that step up. But if you do get the Surface that can run Adobe Suite, you should check out some of my courses for Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer, and Adobe Fresco. See, I snuck a little ad in there on ya. Also discount codes down below. So in this section, we're gonna be talking all about this pen and drawing with this pen. This is the Surface Pen. It obviously costs $100 extra. It doesn't come packed in with the tablet, but this is the same pen that will work on any Surface device, everything from the Surface Studio to the Surface Book to the Surface Pro and obviously on the Surface Go. And this is one of those things that I think is one of the weaknesses of the Surface, which is the pen and the drawing experience. And really what it comes down to is there is some wave to the line and this is uh, Clip Studio that I'm drawing in now, which seems to be better than most apps at this sort of thing, but I definitely can see some wave to the line while I'm drawing. Some apps stabilize better than others. Uh, I do have the stabilization off on this pen, uh, so, so that is still doing a pretty good job here. I'm gonna bring in my ruler, just because your hand has some natural wave to it, so I wanna just kinda show that even when I am using a ruler and drawing with a line, I still get a little bit of mechanical wave. And like I said, from program to program, it's gonna change a little bit. I get more wave in Photoshop. I get a lot more wave in something like Autodesk Sketchbook. It's not just the pen that makes up the drawing experience though. And that's something that I wanted to show while using this tablet. And you may have seen it in the background while I was working up to this point. One of the things that the iPad or an Android tablet does really well is uh, pinching and zooming. And obviously you can pinch and zoom in some applications on Windows, which is really nice. But oftentimes, ugh, it feels like pulling teeth. It doesn't feel responsive. Your fingers start moving before the canvas starts moving. Ugh, I'll pinch in there to kind of show that. Now part of that is the Surface Go. Part of that is just Windows isn't quite as smooth as say doing the same thing, you know, on an iPad in Clip Studio. Some apps are better at th this than others. For example, Sketchable is really responsive when you pinch and zoom. In fact, I found Sketchable to be kind of fun to draw in on the Surface Go. So if you're just looking for like a sketchbook type app, maybe drawing is something that you wanna do on the Surface Go, but it's not gonna be the primary activity you're doing. This is definitely an app I would take a look at because it's just so much more performant than everything else that I've tested here. Overall, I think the reason that you get a Windows tablet as opposed to an iPad or an Android tablet is because you want those full apps. You wanna be able to do everything without compromising, but where this kind of falls down and trips up is those apps don't perform particularly well here. And so Windows primary advantage that, that you might get a tablet for is kind of muted quite a bit using this base level uh, Surface Go 2. All right, it's time to talk about price, which is the elephant in the room. The price for the entry level Surface Go is great, $400, but it's also a little bit deceptive. You're gonna want a keyboard cover. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're probably gonna use it for art, so you're gonna need a pen. So that $400 entry level price tag is actually $600. You may think you can get by without a keyboard, but trust me, you're gonna want a keyboard. Now, if you do go with that higher configuration, your final price is going to be $829. And when you're looking at it from that price point, you might be better off going with an older Surface Pro 5 or a Surface Pro 6. All right, in this section, I'm gonna be saying some things that a lot of you aren't gonna to wanna to hear. You can go ahead, yell at me down in the comments. I don't care, this is a hill that I am totally willing to die on. The question I asked at the very beginning of this review, is the $400 configuration good enough? Here is your final answer. No, it is not. Do not buy the $400 Surface Go. Everybody wants a $400 Surface. Why? Well, because look at it, it's so cool. It's the same reason everybody likes the $329 iPad or the $350 Tab S6 Lite. It's such an amazingly good price point, but at the same time, I don't think you can make a good enough Windows tablet 
at that price point the same way you can make a good enough iPad or a good enough Android tablet. Now don't take this out of context. I know a lot of you are thinking, why do you hate Windows? I, I'm not saying I hate Windows. What I am saying is Windows is a way more robust operating system than iPad OS or than Android. That is its strength and that is its weakness. The strength there is you can run anything and you can run everything and you're not making any compromises on the software front. The weakness though is you need better hardware to actually pull that off. Better hardware means more money. Where the iPad and the Galaxy Tab make cuts in all the right places and are still incredibly performant at that price point, Windows is not. This can run a lot of applications, but it can't run them all smoothly. You can feel it chugging. You have too many browser tabs open or another app open at the same time. It really does get slow. And even though you might think, hey, I can live with that, I, I think you're gonna regret it six months or a year down the road. And for all of you who are right now saying, but Brad, this isn't for that. It's not for artists and illustrators. It's for people who wanna check their email, surf the web, watch Netflix, I say to you, that's the exact same argument people make for just getting an iPad over a laptop. And so you might say, fine, then jump up to the Core M processor, but you know what's a better drawing experience? An iPad or a Galaxy Tab. If you really need a Windows computer to do your work, you need to get a good Windows computer. And unfortunately, I don't think this is it. You're better off getting a little bit older of a Surface Pro than you are getting this amazingly cute little tablet that I want to love, but just can't. Thank you all for watching. If you have any comments or questions, as always, let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.